it goes so fast and it's nearly over, but we are going to end on an amazing note with uh, Hugo Velka. So Hugo is... Uh, <laughs> All right, don't throw your knickers on the stage. Um, Hugo is... Uh, <laughs> Hugo is a product designer working for HubSpot. Um, he studied web design communication in Brazil, moved to Ireland, built companies, or helped companies to build and foster a design culture within their organization. And he comes to us tonight from Berlin, and he's going to talk to us about designing happiness. Thanks, Hugo. All right. So, are you happy? Have you ever got this question before? Well, if you haven't, it's probably you haven't hung out around me like for a long time. Um, I ask this question all the time to everyone who is around me. And the answers that I get goes pretty much like this. Most, like half of the people say yes or no, and the other half look at me like, Hugo, what the fuck this question? <laughs> um, and I think like for me, the, que the question or the answer gets an issue, becomes an issue when I get these answer. They say no. Because that gets me like thinking, like, oh, what do I say now? Like, uh, what do I do? And that is start to connect, like, I start to connect, like, to a problem that we actually have in the world today. So we today have like 121 million of people that are diagnosed with uh, depression, and that's an issue that, let's be honest, like, we should care about. Um, so the question, the whole number that we are seeing here, got me thinking, like, what can I do? for this world to become better, how can we improve that number? Like, as an individual or as a designer as I am now, what can I do? So that led me to start to research on how can we make the world that we live happier. And looking into kind of techniques, recipes, concepts, I found a few things that I want to share with you. So the first one that I want to talk about is the concept of the happiness halo that describes that if we combine three pieces that are the anticipation, the interaction, and the afterglow, we are able to create more ha like happier experiences. So there are a few companies already out there doing that, where they connect these three dots, and they can prove that they make people happier doing that. And what I'm talking about here is, for example, like Disney, you all know the brand. Disney World has been using this formula for a long time. Like, since the moment that you arrive at the airport in Orlando until the moment that you get to the gate, there is a lot of anticipation for you to discover the magical world of Disney. You interact in the park all day, and they close it with a big fireworks show. Um, the other company using that is Uber. As soon as you click on your app that you want a cab, for example, you see a little map that see the cab come on your way, create anticipation. Then they remove, like, all the interaction that you had before about, like, caring about the taximeter or the direction we are going to. And then at the end, even they remove the cash interaction that you had for you to create a memory. So that's like another company that is using that. Another concept that I came across was the happiness pendulum. Uh, Paul Nolan, man, he mentions that like if we find the balance between pleasure and uh, purpose, we can find happiness as well. And here, like, when I, when I saw that for the first time, I was asking, like, what does he mean by purpose? Are we talking about, like, logical purpose, like things that you just find a purpose to do, or, like, meaningful purpose? So, for example, like, donating money or something. And the, the answer here is, like, it doesn't matter. It's purpose if you find this balance. And as an example, I have, like, the workspaces today. Something that you use to go and just, like, to fulfill the purpose of, like, work. Companies today are adding a lot of fun, a lot of pleasure to it to make the employees happier. Another company doing that is Amazon Fresh, for example. The whole dragging task of like doing groceries, today you can get your app and do that while you do Netflix, for example, while you're watching movies. This is something like really interesting. So these companies or these examples that I mentioned, like they are still, they are creating happiness, but they are still focusing on money. And like this is business, we know this, it's important. Um, but I think like where I've been w wondering and thinking about is what about if we change, if we focus on happiness first? Will that change? Will that make like more people happier or like will make more money to companies? So I kind of like been believing in this idea that if we do focus on happiness, try to look like 
beyond the line of like what users are doing, I think we have a big opportunity out there. And not like only ourselves as designers, but like our companies that we are working for. So the whole talk today is just to mention to, for all of you in the, in the room who are designers, to not settle to that line of creating usable products for our users, but actually go beyond. Find where the, the happiness is. I think like we have a huge opportunity to make more people happier and eventually, if we all take responsibility and make our part in here, we're definitely going to make this place a much happier place to live. Thank you. Thank you.